David here with Figboot on pens. Uh, near the conclusion of each of the past few years, I've posted a video of my favorite discoveries from the previous 12 months, and it is time to continue the tradition. In regard to pens and related items, this has been a great year of discovery for me. Lots of new brands and new products. The items making this list might be brand new products introduced this past year or something which has been around for a while that I only recently discovered or had the opportunity to review. Uh, most of the items I show you today have been reviewed. Uh, if they have, I'll put a link to the review in the notes below this video. Uh, what I'm going to do in this video is go over my top pens of the year, um, three inks I wanted to highlight, uh, some new storage I obtained, uh, as well as talk about some of my favorite videos of this past year. And just to reiterate, uh, the items that I'm sharing in this video are not my overall favorite in my collection. Uh, they're my favorite from the items which I acquired, reviewed, or discovered in this year. Okay, to get things rolling, please join me over here at camera two. Okay, let's jump right in and talk about some pens. I am a big fan of unique attention-grabbing pens, and the first on this list is exactly that. It's from an artisan in Poland by the name of Marcin Wojciech. Uh, his company is Makar Knives, and this pen is called the Torpedo. Uh, this is a custom handmade pen I commissioned from Marcin, and I have been very pleased with it. Uh, it is made from titanium, and the PVD in these crevices are certainly attention-grabbing. Uh, this roll stop is very cool as well. Uh, now, uh, overall, this pen is on the thin side. While I typically don't prefer pens and sections as this thin, uh, you know, it is a unique creation. And, uh, you know, I enjoy using this pen as it rotates through my collection. Do I need more pens this thin? No, but I certainly love this one. Uh, I just love the uh, way the treatment is extended onto the section. And then even the purple nib is outstanding as well. This is just a really, really cool pen. Next up is a pen from a company based out of Ohio here in the U.S. That company would be the Edison Pen Company, and the pen which has quickly grown to be one of my favorites is the Edison Collier Grande. Uh, there are a lot of things about this pen which really hit the mark for me. Um, I'm fond of larger pens, and the Collier Grande is certainly that. Uh, it is rather girthy. Uh, this is a Jonathan Brooks primary manipulation for material, which is a little more wispy and mixed than some of the other versions of primary manipulation, which uh, have more of a stark contrast. Uh, and then when you take off the cap, you see that this pen is equipped with a number eight stainless steel Magna Carta nib, which is a real pleasure to write with. Um, Brian Gray and his team at Edison do an outstanding job of testing and tuning every nib that leaves their facility. And I just really love this pen. Next is a pen from a company based in Taiwan. Uh, that would be Mr. Cypress. And the pen is the Eggshell. Um, the company offers this pen in a number of different eggshell patterns. This particular model is called Eggshell E09. Uh, many times, quail's eggs are used in this process. Uh, this particular pen is made from duck eggshell. Uh, duck eggs are relatively thick, so the shell needs to be painted and polished repeatedly to be flat enough to lay correctly on the pen. Um, I love how the uh, shells diminish down the barrel. Um, I like this stylistic element more than if the shell would have just completely covered the pen. I mean, that still would have looked nice, but I care for this a little bit more. As an additional element on the section, there is a dusting of Raiden to add a bit of a different look to the forward portion of the pen. Uh, and then I upgraded to a gold nib on this pen to complete the package. I just love the overall looks of this pen. Um, I'd always wanted to add an eggshell pen to my collection. Uh, and if you're looking to do the same, Mr. Cypress has a number of pens that might fill that need for you. This year I tried to fill a couple of what I felt to be holes in my collection, and a pen I felt was needed to fill one of those holes was the Namiki Yukari Royale. Um, I'd consider this pen to kind of be the younger sibling to the Namiki Emperor. Um, it is metal and has the same red Arushi finish. Um, it is a great size and Namiki nibs are outstanding. Um, this is essentially the size of a number six nib, um, but you can see 
in comparison to the Emperor, how it kind of pales in comparison to the nib on the uh, Emperor, which is just outstanding uh, in its own right. But the Yukari Royale itself is a fantastic pen as well. Um, I'm really glad I picked this up. I think it looks really sharp. I kind of like the gold trim on here. And then, uh, like I mentioned, the nib is outstanding as well. Then next we have another pen from Namiki, and that would be the Nippon Art Series Golden Pheasant. Um, I uh, recently included this pen in my gift guide as well. Um, the hand-painted Mackie work on Namiki pens is just stunning. Um, I, you know, I just really feel this work is beautiful. And I kind of like the contrast between the different birds here on the barrel as well as the cap. There's tons of little detail that I just keep discovering. Um, this is a pen that isn't just a pen, uh, it's truly a piece of art and it provides a fantastic writing experience as well. Uh, I have a couple of pens in the Nippon Art series and I care for them a great deal. Then next is a pen from Leonardo, Spoiler alert, it might not be the last Leonardo you see on this list, but this particular Leonardo was a limited edition collaboration with the Italian retailer Stilo and & Stile, and it is the Prisma. Uh, there is just so much that I like about the pen. Um, I love the frosted look that just gives you a peek at what's going on inside the pen. Um, I also like the rainbow PVD, PVD treatment on the exterior of this pen. It provides just enough of a pop of color with without being too over the top. Um, the nib also has the rainbow treatment on it as well, um, as well as the converter, which I thought was a nice touch here at this point, as well as the metal point at the end. Um, even the interior metal parts of the blind cap. Um, this is just a really stunning looking uh, pen in my opinion, and it's one of my favorite pens that Leonardo has ever produced. When talking about going to pen shows, I often talk about how one of my favorite things about shows is making new discoveries. The next two items are items and retailers I discovered at the San Francisco show. First of up, there is a pen from a small artisan pen maker called Skogsy Pens, and this is their Micarta model. Um, I'm fond of Micarta as a material, uh, and this pen just is really well made. Uh, Zach and Amy Skogsy are the husband and wife team behind the brand. It was fun to see them show up at their first pen show with a table full of pens, and by the end of the show they had completely sold out of everything. Um, I'm really glad that I picked up this pen early in the show. Um, I like the look and the feel of my Carta. It feels really warm in the hand. Uh, and I really look forward to seeing what Zach and Amy come up with next. But this is one that I really enjoy. The other discovery I made at the San Francisco show was a retailer I was not aware of in the Westwood area of Los Angeles, which is Flax Pen to Paper. Uh, they had an exclusive limited edition Montegrappa, which I purchased from them, which is this pen right here. Um, I'm probably butchering the name, uh, but this is the Montegrappa Venetia Rio di San Marcula. Um, I like the resin on this pen. It reminds me of oil paints being mixed on an artist's palette. Um, this was a pen that I purchased myself. I've been meaning to get around to reviewing this uh, while they still have them in stock. It is a limited edition. Um, it's something I really enjoy. We'll see if I'm able to get around to that sooner rather than later. Uh, sometimes the pens I purchase for myself have a, uh, a way to kind of make it down the priority list as opposed to ones that uh, uh, are provided by retailers. But we'll see if I can get to this one sooner rather than later. Okay, a couple more pens to go. Next is a pen with a very cool theme and probably the best finial I've ever seen. And that would be the Kilk Camera Laterna. Um, it has a film theme as evident by the film stock here on the clip. Um, I love the countdown that is here on the band. Um, but the highlight for me is the spinning film reel. Let's get this in frame. Um, the, it's just the mechanism on it is so smooth and interesting. I mean, it will just spin for a lot longer than you think it should. And it's fairly quiet as well. It's just really, really neat. Um, overall, this is just a great themed pen. I love the sprockets that are here 
on the uh, band up top. There's just lots of little elements that make this a really special pen. Uh, and the nib is nice as well. Uh, every pen that I've tried from Kilk has been outstanding. Okay, last up in regard to my pen highlights of the year is a bit of a cheat. It's not one pen, it's actually three. And those are my three pen projects I had this year. First up, there was the Leonardo Memento Zero Carolina Midnight. Um, I really like this Jonathan Brooks resin. Uh, I think it looks a really nice in contrast with the ruthenium trim. Uh, and the ruthenium nib looks really great on here as well. Um, you know, and after this model, we had a bit of leftover material. So I decided to make a small run of this pen right here, which is the Memento Zero Grande, which is a piston filler that has a 14 karat gold nib and totally decked out. Um, I thought that the two of these made for a nice set. Then finally, later in the year, I had my most recent project, which was a collaboration with Franklin Christoph, and that would be the Model 66 in California Sunset. Um, this is another Jonathan Brooks material. This was material Jonathan and I uh, concocted when I visited him down at his studio. And when I say we, I mean that Jonathan did 99.9% .9 of the work, and he let me stir a couple of things to make me feel I was helping. But I was really proud of all three of these projects uh, and then also really looking forward to a couple of projects that are potentially coming up here in this next year. I can't wait to share them with you. Okay, that's it in regard to pens. Uh, up next, we had a couple of storage solutions I picked up that I've really enjoyed. To begin with, there is this 30 pen chest from Leonardo. Uh, this case goes for around 90 euros and is a really nice value for the price. It's made from a lightweight wood and is lined in black velvet. The trays are removable and overall it's fairly lightweight. It's a good alternative to some other more expensive storage. And speaking of more expensive storage, I wanted to share with you one of my favorite purchases of the year, which is this 100 pen box from Toyoka Craft. Um, with the current exchange rate with the yen, which is very favorable to the dollar right now, this case is around $450. Uh, it was more than that when I purchased mine, but I have not regretted picking it up. Um, it has allowed me to consolidate some of the storage I was using, and I just feel that this case is very classy looking. Uh, and I just love the products Toyoka Craft produces. As a bonus item, I have this tray that barely fits in the screen here that I picked up at the San Francisco show. Uh, this is only around $30, and I found this to be very useful when I am doing reviews. Um, I'll have the pens that I'm using for size comparisons in here, so they're not rolling around on my little side desk that I'm using, which also happens to be from Toyoka Craft. Next up, I wanted to mention a couple of inks. Um, each year, I enjoy taking a look at the Diamine Inkvent calendar. Um, like purchasing my Hobonichi, picking up one of these calendars has become a fun annual tradition. Um, another ink I really enjoyed this year was from an Indian brand, and that would be Krishna. And this would be their Peacock. Um, I think it's a really fun little bottle. Uh, and the blue here, as you can see here, is a nice vibrant blue. It kind of reminds me a lot of Pirate Orochizuku Konpeki, which is one of my favorite inks. Uh, and then finally, in regard to one more ink company, I'm glad I learned about Monarca, which is a company based in Mexico. Um, their inks began being distributed here in the U.S. this past year, and they have a number of colors that are based in natural elements found in the Southwest. Um, uh, it comes in this bottle right here, and it also comes in this little stand, which is really nice. Especially since there's sometimes that there's bottles that you feel could accidentally spill over when you are inking them up. It does have a rather narrow uh, neck on the bottle, which uh, I wish was a little bit larger, but the inks are very nice. Um, this particular color is Cenote, which is one of my favorite ones, and they have a bunch. Uh, this is Arena Blanca, and there's Ray Jaguar. And there's Nopal, and Mar Caribe, and Mangalar, Cardona, Tierra Colorada, and Cielo Cruel. So those are some of the inks from Monarca that are worth checking out. In regard to some of my favorite videos of this past year, I enjoyed putting together my look at the San Francisco Pen Show and an overview of my trip out to uh, Northern and Southern California. 
Um, a video I did on a whim was the one showing how flammable celluloid was. Uh, it's really impressive and uh, how quickly and spectacularly celluloid goes up in flames. Uh, it's not something you really want to mess around with. And the final video I wanted to highlight was the one I did to mark my 500th video where I provided a bit of a behind the scenes look into how I put together reviews and produce them for you. Um, I'm actually closing in on 600 videos now, but I thought it would uh, was fun to give you a bit of a peek behind the scenes of the uh, proverbial curtain, so to speak. Okay. There you have it, another year of reviews. Um, in October, it was the seven year anniversary of this channel. It's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed the creative outlet of producing content. Uh, the professional relationships that I've been able to build have been amazing, uh, as well as all of the new pen friends I've made along the way. I really look forward to being able to produce bigger and better things in the upcoming year. I greatly appreciate appreciate all of the support and time you've taken out of your day to watch the content that I produce. I hope it's provided you with solid information as well as some entertainment. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.